Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to the channel. Positive vibes, man. Y'all ever just feel really good for no reason? That's how I'm feeling today. I've been feeling down for a lot of this year, and that's what we're going to talk about today, how this year has affected Rockstar Games. I'm choosing my words carefully because, well, YouTube will just demonetize certain sensitive topics, but you know what I did? I bought a Charizard card from 1999 just because I watched Logan Paul's video and I'm kind of into investing. So I thought that was cool. I don't really know anything about Pokemon, but I know a lot about GTA. So if y'all enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Let's go for 2,000 likes for the algorithm. Help a brother out. Also, check out my Ewan Racing chair. You can find their link in the description. You can use my code and get the hookup on a really cool chair as well. So let's go ahead and just start from the very beginning of 2020 since, well, we got off to kind of a rocky start. So on December 31st, 2019 or January 1st, 2020, it broke the web that Young Melee, the voice and likes of CJ from GTA San Andreas, was speaking out against Rockstar Games, saying that he will never return, that at one point he wanted to beat up Michael Hollick, the likes of Nico Bellic, and so much more. And everybody was just kind of laughing because, like, this is the most random thing ever. Like, yeah, we would love to have CJ return, but we just know that'll never happen. And after this drama, that will definitely never happen. So, anyways, that was in January. That was at the very beginning of the year. Hey, whatever, just laugh it off. Bring on February. Gonna be a better month, right? Well, not exactly. So, in February, it was announced that Dan Hauser, the co-founder of Rockstar Games and writer of pretty much every Grand Theft Auto, every Rockstar game out there was going to be leaving the company after 20 some odd years. And that was a big blow. A lot of people were like, dang, well, what does this mean for the next Grand Theft Auto? Is GTA 6 going to be affected or whatever? No, that's not going to happen because, well, he left this year. GTA 6 has been in development for a few years and the story's already been written years ago. So, we won't see the effects of this until another Rockstar game or GTA freaking 7. I can't believe I'm saying that. But anyways, that was a big blow in February, hearing that Dan Hauser is going to leave. Just because when you think of Rockstar, if you're a big fan of Rockstar, you already know who this guy is. And he doesn't have to be a celebrity being in every game, but he's a part of every game. And he has been. So it makes us kind of worried of what the next game will be like without him, since it'll pretty much be the first. So that was in February. Bring on March. Dan Hauser finally leaves. We also have another guy named Gunna Inno Daythap predicting that GTA 6 will be announced at the end of March. So everybody is excited at this point. You know why? Because this guy had some credibility. So Gunna Inno Daythap, in case you don't remember or you don't know, well, in 2018, it was in April, he actually accurately predicted on the GTA forums the Red Dead Redemption 2 trailer number three at the time obviously the game wasn't out yet neither was this trailer well he predicted everything that was going to happen via some gta forum posts and well it didn't happen because it got delayed by one week so when it finally happened guess what everything that he predicted was real so everybody went from saying oh this guy's a sham to wait a minute Remember that guy who predicted this? And then nothing really came of that. He never really said anything again that I know of. And, well, that was that until 2020 when he said that at the end of March, GTA 6 is going to be announced. Or he was being very cryptic, not outright saying that. But because he was right the first time, we thought, well, he's probably going to be right this time. But something happened. In the middle of March, Rockstar Games announced on March 15th on Twitter that... In the interest of reducing the possible impact of what's going on, Rockstar has implemented work-from-home policies across our international offices and studios. So, to sum all of that up, Rockstar said, Hey, you guys, instead of coming into the offices, obviously you're going to work at home. This is when the lockdowns took a major effect and things started to really kind of get serious there. And personally, I think that this guy might have been right. Maybe we were going to get an announcement, a teaser, not even a trailer, maybe just a logo. But because of this happening, it really set Rockstar back. And it does make sense, but at the same time, that kind of doesn't make sense. So that happened in March. That's where it all started. So from March till about June, we really didn't hear anything from Rockstar other than they said, hey, we're going to donate 5% of the merchandise and shark card money that you give us to uh, a relief fund for everything that's going on. Well, then in June, 
at the Sony PlayStation 5 event, the first thing we heard, or we saw, was a Rockstar logo. And then we heard the famous quote. Why did I move here? I guess it was the weather. Yeah, I think we're all tired of hearing that at this point. It just doesn't hit different in 2020 or hit the same like it did back in October or November 2011 when we heard that for the first time. So that was cool, but it was kind of a letdown because everybody's just tired of Grand Theft Auto V. So let's go ahead and move on here. So for the longest time, fans of Grand Theft Auto have wanted a Cops and Crooks DLC. This has been around since the very, very beginning. In 2016, even, there were lots of leaks and rumors about a Cops and Crooks DLC that then got canceled. But at the end of 2019 and throughout 2020, there were various leaks and things found within the game files that were hinting at Rockstar possibly bringing back a Cops and Crooks update, and even Yan2295 talked about this back in June. He said there's a lot of speculation in the community about a Cops and Crooks update for GTA Online. But given the current situation, mainly in the U.S., but also worldwide, I don't see how Rockstar uh, could release a police-themed content, or release police-themed content for now, if at all. And he's very correct on that, because in the United States, amidst a global pandemic, when everybody's kind of supposed to be social distancing, well, more people are gathering than ever because of a lot of riots and protests that are going on that have to do with the police and things like that in the world. I'm choosing my words wisely, because I really just don't want this video to get demonetized. But that was happening. And obviously, Rockstar's pretty notorious for... Well, being kind of edgy and pushing things to the limits, but as far as this goes in real life, I think even Rockstar has their limits because obviously we never saw the Cops and Crooks update, which could be for two reasons. Obviously for what was going on in the world, but also because of working from home. And this is something very new, I'm sure, as a developer or, or for developers. Uh, it's a very rough transitional stage. Maybe it's a bit different, and like I said, I'm not sure how that goes, so I don't want to get too... Uh, speculative on that and, and to into detail, but there was cops and crooks and it seems like that that was canceled But in July Rockstar announced that hey, we have a new update coming It's the summer special and then we're gonna have another one coming in December. It's gonna be the big one We're gonna be going to a new location But the thing about the summer special update that we got is it was very very bare bones expensive But bare bones there was hardly any new voices or anything new at all in this one, aside from the overpriced, reskinned, very expensive exotic supercars. So, my kind of theory behind this is well, it's because everybody's working from home, Rockstar's not getting people in the studio, and that's why we don't have all these crazy new missions with new actors, with lots of new voices. It was just the yacht missions, basically, that we got. So, I think that that's a major effect it had there because out of every GTA online update we've gotten in the past few years, this is definitely bottom of the barrel type stuff. Well, after that, there was a bit of silence. And then in August, it was announced that Laszlo Jones had actually left Rockstar Games. So not only have we lost Dan Hauser, we lost the OG Laszlo, who's been around since the very, very beginning. So that was a big blow, but Laszlo had his reasons for leaving to take care of his sister, who is battling cancer. So very bittersweet and also very very respectful and understanding why Laszlo, a man who has been in every Grand Theft Auto and been around since the beginning as well, is leaving the company. So definitely been a weird and sad year to be a Rockstar Games fan. Also because there's been nothing but radio silence and that's basically where we're at right now in October 2020. Um, last week, it was announced that Rockstar had purchased a new studio, a studio that's known for remastering games, so that's kind of a plus, but at the same time, we don't know anything, so really, that's just kind of speculation on what could be happening. They could just be helping out with a game that we don't know about right now, but either way, that's kind of where we're at. That's how 2020 has affected Rockstar games, and really... Aside from Rockstar making some charitable contributions and relief funds for what's going on, it's about the only positive thing coming out of Rockstar Games. I guess you could say GTA 5 on the PS5 is positive, but like I said, I'm getting uh, yawn. I'm tired. I'm tired of even thinking about that or saying GTA 5 because that's boring. It's so old now. There's nothing new. So anyways, 
that's where we're at. Wanted to fill y'all in. Thought this would be something cool to kind of talk about, just to recap. So hopefully the last month and a half of 2020 is good. Hopefully there's some positive stuff coming out, especially with that December 2020 update and that new location, wherever that might be. But until then, we're just going to have to wait and see. If y'all enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. And I hope to see y'all on the flip side.